Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Welcome to our Trinity Baptist Church worship service. We're glad that you're here. Let's praise the Lord together.
sacrifice and labor of love and commitment over this year. Our first group of scriptures is coming from the book of Mark, St. Mark chapter 12. St. Mark chapter 12, beginning at the 28th verse through the 33rd verse. Mark chapter 12, 28 through 33, which reads as follows. I'm reading from the Tree of Life Bible the TLV version, the Messianic Jewish Bible, and it reads as follows. One of the Torah scholars came and heard them debating, seeing that Yahshua had answered them well. Yahshua is Jesus. He answered him, which commandment is first of all? Yahshua answered, the first is Shema, Israel, Adonai, Elohim, Adonai, Eckhard, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love Adonai, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. The second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. These, well said, teacher, the Torah scholar said to him, you have spoken the truth that he is a card. Besides him, there is no other. And to love him with all of your heart and with all of your understanding and with all of your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is much more than burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Yahshua saw that he had answered wisely, he said unto them, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to answer, ask him any questions from then on. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for Jesus who sacrificed on the cross that we may have a right to the tree of life. We ask you, O oh Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins and our trespass and forgive the trespass committed against us. May reconciliation be made unto us and unto you. Above all things, O oh Lord, we owe you a great debt. And we thank you, Lord, that you sacrificed your life so that we would not have to pay that debt. Father, as we look back over this year, we see a great chaotic confusion and death and mayhem taking place in the United States and even all over the world. But we thank you, O oh Lord, that you're greater than the confusion. You're greater than the chaos. You're greater than the poison that we have experienced. We thank you, Lord, that your gospel is the good news. So, Father, we pray that you would help us to help us to be on the mission field that you have sent 
that we should go out into all the world and preach the gospel. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us to bring our hearts and minds and our commitment and sacrifice of ourselves, that we might be obedient to you to do that which will give honor and glory unto you. We thank you for those who've done well, and we pray for those who have fallen by the wayside. We thank you for those who have paved the way, Lord, and have shown us the true light of how they live their life for Christ. We thank you for our forebearers that have given us a good example. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to do likewise, to do even better. And so, Father, we ask you to encourage our souls that we can carry on, that we can continue to do that which would honor you, and that we'll draw others to the ark of salvation. Teach us your ways, O oh Lord, and show us your precepts that we may walk in them. Help us to become more like you. We repent, O oh Lord, and we ask of you to have mercy on us. And we thank you, O oh Lord, that we deserve death, but you have given us eternal life. We thank you, O oh Lord, we deserve the punishment, Lord, but you had mercy on us and gave us grace. We confess, Lord, that we will place our first and foremost focus on doing that that will give you honor, give you glory, give you praise. That we will not forget about those who are in darkness, those who don't know you. We will leave the 99 and go after those that are lost in this dark world. Help us, O oh Lord, help us. We need you more now than ever before. We have learned many things, but we have not succeeded in doing everything that we should do. We ask you, Lord, to just pour out your Holy Spirit on our youngsters. We ask, Lord, that you pour out your Holy Spirit for their protection. We ask, you, Lord, for those who are struggling with covert virus that you would show your mercy. And we ask, oh Lord, that you give our governing officials guidance and wisdom that they may humble themselves and turn from their ways to your ways. Then, then you will hear from heaven and heal our land not only our communities, not only those of our culture, but every culture on this globe that the healing will begin. We faithfully give you the praise, the honor, and glory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
forever me and you wise man once wrote two are better than one and a threefold cord is not easily broken forever he me and you thank you powerful praise ensemble bless your heart and thank you for the first number thank you for the first one good morning our second reading today will come from the gospel according to matthew matthew chapter six jesus is preaching sermon on the mount this particular passage beginning at verse 25 matthew chapter 6 i'll be reading verses 25 through 27 33 and 34 matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 27 and then verses 33 and 34 from the new king james version do not worry do not worry speak to me lord therefore i say to you do not worry about what your life what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day, its own trouble. Do not worry about tomorrow. For to worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The grass withers and the flower fades but the word of our God stands eternally. Will you bow with me, pray for me, and as we are in the house of prayer, I respectfully request that you remember the inhabitants and the survivors of the mass shooting at the FedEx plant in Indianapolis, we remember and lift the family members of Brother Dante Wright in Minneapolis, the family, George Floyd, the city, the nation. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that you have blessed us to be alive once again. Thank you that we heard your call and felt your drawl to come to your house of prayer and house of worship. So we thank you for this day. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the light. We believe in your word. We believe 
what you taught. You ministered and you served and you loved and you healed. You raised from the dead. You were raised from the dead. I believe and I know, but I have questions. I have questions. These are the times that test and try our souls, Father, but I have questions. Resurrection is true, but I have questions. In these uncertain times, I believe you said, do not worry about tomorrow. And I believe what you say. But I'm uncertain, as millions are, whether they admit it or not, they are worried and they are scared and they are uncertain. So Father, in the name of Jesus, before you and your people, let me speak to you on their behalf. Because they are uncertain. We don't know. But Lord, we don't know what the future holds. But I can hold on to the one who holds all things. You. Help us to remember when we feel uncertain that you are not hearing us or not listening. But Lord, when we feel uncertain that you created the world and the heavens and you created me, thank you for just saying, breathe and here you are. Father, I thank you that you are involved in every detail, even when we can't see or understand it. Lord, we do not want to live in fear of the unexpected or uncertain. I know I can't truly live for you if I am worried about what lies ahead. Help me to rest in the assurance that you hold me, you hold your people in the palm of your hand. You know what tomorrow will bring. Enable me and enable us to be reassured that your knowing is far greater than our knowing. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, you said. Your ways are higher than your, our ways, you said. And we believe. But even when it looks like the future will be different than what we hope for, remind us that you have good plans for each of us. Help us and help me to truly believe and know and stand on the truth that you will work all things to good for those who love you and are the called according to your purpose. Whisper to me and to each of us when our minds and when my mind wanders to all the what is and the what it could be or what it should be. Remind us and Grant us again the awareness of your presence in small ways when we are faced with uncertainty. Whether it be a favorable, whether it be a favorite song that we heard or a song that we hear in worship on the radio or on our iPad or a DVD or we watch on YouTube in the small things, even when a hummingbird comes to my second floor window, thank you for letting me know that you are watching over me, watching over each of us. But Lord, help me and help us to see that you are here with us right now. And when life is uncertain, thank you for whispering and shouting in our soul. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of time. When the prophet Habakkuk was confused and upset, how long, Lord, how long? You said that you would do a mighty work that even we would not believe. So, Lord, this word that you gave the prophet, hear, people, the just will live by faith. The righteous will live by faith. The just will live by faith. 
now you and I will live by faith. So we thank you for that assuring word. And we will go forth in joy and worship you in spirit and truth. And when it's yours to call and ours and mine to answer, may we and I finish well, but be well when I finish. In the name of him who came and is coming again, in the name of Jesus, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse, Yeshua, Jesus, we thank you. In his name, we raise from a dead level to a living perpendicular. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the just, I will live by faith. Amen. Amen.
I want to share with you today from the Gospel of John, John chapter 17. We're going to read verse 8 and just the A section of verse 9. John chapter 17, verse 8 and verse 9, part A. And it reads, reading from the New International Version, For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I want to speak to you today from these words of Jesus. He talks about they knew with certainty. I want to talk for just a little while about certainty. This 17th chapter, uh, J. Vernon McGee says, is one of the most remarkable chapters in all of the scriptures. And he says that because this chapter is uh, completely one of the uh, prayers of Jesus. The whole chapter is Jesus praying. Now we know the scripture has taught us that he prayed all night on several occasions. And this occasion, we actually get to hear what he prays. We actually get to hear the master's prayer. And I lift up this part of the master's prayer because this part of the prayer is for you and I. Uh, God is talking to his father, Jesus our Christ, God the Son, is talking to God the Father. And he says some things here that will help us uh, to be certain about uh, what's going on in life, particularly in these uncertain times, these times of injustice, these times of pandemic, these times of economic uh, problems and uh, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, uh, there are some uncertainties that are going on in our lives. And we have this word from Christ about how we can be certain. Jesus says that they knew with certainty that I came from you. And so I want to try to lift up some things here out of the text that will help us as we I look at this prayer of Jesus and what this prayer will do for you and I. This 17th chapter of John uh, is the longest prayer in the Bible, and it also is the prayer that we get uh, the heart of Christ, what Christ says to his Father and what he says to our God and what he will do, what our God will do because Jesus has prayed. Prayer is our most significant weapon. Prayers, uh, one writer said, our most underutilized weapon. Uh, we talk about prayer more than we actually pray. And so we need to actually get in the practice of actually just spending time in prayer. Uh, we want to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ, who oftentimes would just retreat from his busy schedule, spend some time alone in prayer. And so I want to lift up part of this prayer now in John chapter 17, verse 8. I want to lift up what the Lord says that would be helpful for us. Uh, there are actually uh, five things that he says here in the text that I believe will be a, a blessing to us and that will strengthen us and will help us, you and I, to be certain about our walk with our God and certain that our God will not leave us nor forsake us. I should note to you also, uh, Matthew Henry says, that when we study this prayer of Jesus, we need to study it with the understanding that God has never ever not answered Jesus' prayer. God the Father heard and answered yes to every prayer of Jesus. There was not one time that God said to Jesus, no. Every time, every time he prayed, God said yes. Even in that prayer of Gethsemane, he said, uh, you know, the cup might pass, but he said, not my will, thy will be done. And God said, well, this is my will that you go through the cross. He answered, yes. Our God always answers the prayers of Jesus with yes. And so it's significant for us when Jesus says, I pray for you. I pray for them that are following me. I, I pray for them. And I want to try to lift up how important that is as we study this uh, passage of Scripture. And so let me read it again, verse 8. For I gave them the words you gave me. So we want to start out with the words. Uh, this is what Jesus says. I gave them the word you gave me, 
And Jesus Christ is the Word. When you read John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so Jesus saying, I gave them you, and you gave them me. The Word. He is the living Word. And Jesus tells us here in this prayer, Father, you sent me, and I gave them myself. I gave them the Word. My brothers and sisters, we need to make sure we have the Word in us. It needs to be a part of who we are. It will be our strength. It will be our light. It, it'll keep us warm on a, on a cold night. It'll be, it'll be comfort to us when we feel all alone. It will be power to us when we need strength. It is the word of God. Jesus says, I gave them your word. Now scholars point out to us, he didn't give them property. He didn't give them money. He didn't give them jewels or diamonds or gold or silver. He, he gave them the word because it's more important than property and jewels and gold and diamonds and silver. The, the word is everlasting. It, it, it will never fade. It will keep us through the rest of our lives and into eternity. It will keep us forever. Jesus Christ gives us the word. The word needs to be first in our lives the word of our Christ. Jesus says, I gave them your word. I hope and pray you will receive his word. I hope and pray that you will do as these followers of him, of Jesus did. In fact, Jesus says they're all in the same sense. I gave them your word, and he says, and they accepted it. They received it. They accepted, they received the word. And that second point I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, Jesus gives the word to everybody. But everybody doesn't accept or receive his word. As many as will receive him, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, as many as received him, he gave them power to become sons and daughters of God. He gives us power when we receive his word. There's power in the word. Uh, there's power to resist temptation. There's power to overcome evil. There's power to battle injustices. We, we need the word's power. And the only way you get the word's power is to have the word itself. We need to accept this word. Jesus says, I gave them the word. And then he says in verse 8, and they accepted, they received it. My brothers and sisters, it's important for you and I that we would receive this word of the Lord. He gives us his word. He taught us his word. He lived out this word. And now he says to us, now receive the word. Not, 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 not talk about it, not, not preach about it, not pray about it, just receive it. And as you receive the word, then everything else will flow from that. Receive this word of the Lord. So I gave them the word and they accepted it. They received it. Then he says, then they knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed. I want to talk about this belief part and we're going to come back to the certainty. Uh, Jesus says they believed. They received it, they accepted it, and then they believed the word. Uh, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we read the word, but we don't always believe what it says. And if you have the word of God and you, you, don't, you don't believe what it says, then you're making that word uh, of not effective in your life. We, we have to believe what the Lord says. Receive it, accept it, and believe the Lord. The Lord is able to do everything he says in his word. He's able to smooth out the rough places. He's able to bring down the high places and make them low. And he's able to take the low places and make them high. Our, our God is able to do, he, the Bible says, he'll make, a, he'll make a river in the desert. Our God is able to do what his word says. They believed his word. When you believe God's word, you act on it. You, you don't hesitate against it. You, 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 you recognize that uh, God is, is faithful, and if, he, if God is uh, bold enough to say it, then God is bold enough to perform it. Uh, that's why he told Moses, just stretch out your rod. You, you're not to part the Red Sea. You just do what I tell you to do, and God parts the seas. And God will do the same thing in our lives. He wants you and I to believe his word. And the Bible tells us, Hebrew eleven six 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God 
because anyone who believes in him must believe that he exists and he is a rewarder of those that earnestly seek him. We, we have to believe that, that God will do what he says. Our faith in him, our trust in him, our belief in him has to be based on who he is and what he says. Our God will do the impossible for us if we will believe. Well, let me get to the fourth thing this scripture says. I want you to note verse 9a says, Jesus tells them, I uh, says in his prayer, he says, Father, I pray for them. I pray for them. You and I need to know that we have a friend in Jesus. And this friend in Jesus, he is always constantly praying for us. Now you should note, uh, it's a little startling. Uh, J. Vernon McGee says it's a little startling to hear, uh, but, but Jesus does not pray for the world. Uh, he, he died for the world. John 3, 16 taught us, but God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for the whole world, but he does not pray for them. He prays for the believers. He prays for those who are following him. And he prays for us that we might win the world. That we might be bold enough to tell a dying world, we have a living savior. He prays for us. Prays for our strength. Praise for our conviction. Praise that you and I would be certain about this Christ. And so here he says it in his prayer. He speaks to us and it tells you and I, verse 8, that they may know with certainty that they know. This is what they know with certainty that I came from God. You need to be certain about that. Jesus says in his prayer, they knew with certainty that I came from God. When we're certain that we have the Christ, when we're certain of this Savior that we have, it then enables us to face any opposition. It was because David was certain that God could defeat the lie. David wasn't certain that David could defeat the Goliath, but he was certain that his God could. And he said, I'll go out there and, his, and, and face that giant because I'm certain my God will defeat him. He, he'll, he'll, he'll use me, he'll use some other source, but, but God, God will defeat him. And as David looked back over his life, he's trying to convince his brothers and trying to convince uh, King Saul that he could beat that, that giant. Uh, he said, well, look, look at what God did when I was shepherding the sheep. Uh, a lion came, and I defeated that lion by the power of God. He said, a bear came, and I defeated that bear by the power of God. And he said, this giant standing before me. Actually, uh, he didn't call him a giant. He says, this uh, uncircumcised Philistine. One writer said, he wouldn't, even, he wouldn't even acknowledge that he was a giant. What he acknowledged was, this was an enemy of God. And this enemy of God, he stands and he thinks that he can defeat our God. Our God will get the victory because we stand for him. Jesus says that he ha we have to be certain about who our God is. We have to be certain that Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, he comes from God. And when we're certain about that, it gives us power. It gives us strength. And he tells us he's praying for us that we would be certain. He's praying that we would be certain about what we believe. And so I want to close by telling you what I'm certain of. I'm certain there was a virgin named Mary, and she gave birth to a son called Emmanuel. I'm certain that Emmanuel was born in Bethlehem of Judea, according to the scriptures. I'm certain that Emmanuel gave his life for my sins. I'm certain that Jesus the Christ, he lived a sin-free life. I'm certain that on the third day, he got up out of the grave and declared all power is in his hands. I'm certain that he is the rock of ages and that rock of ages has cleft for me and I can hide myself in him. 
I'm certain that he died that I might have life and he died that I might live eternal. I'm certain that I got a Christ that I can call on when my troubles are weighing me down and my heart is heavy and my tears are flowing. I, I got a Christ I can call. I'm certain that I got a God who will be a mother when I'm motherless. I'm, I'm certain that I got a God who will be my father when I'm fatherless. I'm certain that he hears me when I cry. I'm certain that he'll pick up a bow down head. I'm certain that he'll wipe the tears from our eyes. I'm certain that when we call on his name, if we will just wait on the Lord and build good cheer, he will answer our call. I'm glad I got a God I'm certain about. And I like reading what our foremothers and forefathers used to say. Uh, they used to say, have you been redeemed? And the answer was, certainly, Lord. Have you been baptized? Certainly, Lord. Do you accept Jesus as the Christ? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, 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 Lord. Do you know his name? Certainly, Lord. Will you call on him in the midnight hour? Certainly, Lord. I'm glad that I got a God that I'm certain about. I'm glad that when trouble's coming the, and the United States is uh, acting crazy and the rest of the world is acting crazy, I can get on my knees and tell God all about it. I can get up off my knees certain that God is still in control. God is still working out his plan of salvation. God has not forgotten about us. God knows all of our struggles. I'm certain that we got a friend. We got a friend. His name is Jesus. And when we get on our knees and talk to him, he says he'll bear, he'll bear all of our griefs, all of our struggles, all of our hurts, all of our misunderstanding, all the chaos that goes on around, he'll bear all of our burdens. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our griefs and sins to bear, what a privilege it is to take to Jesus Christ all of our concerns in prayer. We got a great God, and we need to be certain, we need to be certain that he'll hear us when we cry. I'm glad I got good religion. And when you got good religion, you got something you can be certain about. Certainly, 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 Lord. I'm glad I got a God that when I call him, he answers. Will you bow your head with me now as we pray? Gracious God, how grateful and thankful we are. You allowed us to come into this house of prayer one more time. And we called on your name. Uh, that name that is above every name that name that never fails, that name that the angels bow their heads. We thank you, God, that you allowed us to call that great name one more time. That name is Jesus. He is the bright and the morning star. That name is Jesus. He's the savior of all humankind. That name is Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of calling that name. Amen. Won't you stand with me? We're going to close. Uh, do, do you know that song? Let me try to try that. Let's try that. You guys know that song. So, what's the. We're going to try that. Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, Lord. Have you been redeemed? Certainly, Lord. Have you been redeemed? Certainly, Lord. Have you been redeemed? Certainly, Lord. Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you been baptized? Certainly, Lord. Have you been baptized? Certainly, Lord. Have you been baptized?
baptized. Certainly, 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 Lord. Have you got good religion? To him say to keep us from falling. The great shepherd of the sheep, the firstborn from the dead, the blood of the everlasting covenant, even our Savior Jesus our Christ, to him be the million majesty, grace, and power now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.